Hey third grade, welcome back to Novel Study. Okay, I wanna to start today's lesson with a do now. It says on page 69 in your book, so you can go ahead and turn to page 69 or you can follow along right here. Miss Honey gives advice about how her students should interact with Miss Trunchbull. Using the text, what do you assume Miss Trunchbull will be like? Use evidence to support your response. So I'm gonna go ahead and read this aloud and I want you to follow along as I read. As we're reading, we're thinking about what we can assume Miss Trunchbull will be like based on this text evidence. Yes, Miss Honey, they chanted. Good. Now this is the very first day of school for each one of you. It is the beginning of at least 11 long years of schooling that all of you are going to have to go through. And six of those years will be spent right here at Crunchum Hall, where as you know, your headmistress is Miss Trunchable. Let me, for your own good, tell you something about Miss Trunchable. She insists upon strict discipline throughout the school, and if you take my advice, you will do your best to behave yourselves in her presence. Never argue with her. Never answer her back. Always do as she says. If you get on the wrong side of Miss Trunchable, she can liquidize you like a carrot in a kitchen blender. It's nothing to laugh about, Lavender. Take that grin off your face. All of you will be wise to remember that Miss Trunchable deals very, very severely with anyone who gets out of line in this school. Have you got the message? Okay, so now that we have read that, I want you to give me a thumb up when you can tell me what do you think Miss Trunchable, Trunchable will be like based on what we just read. Okay, great. So, like I'm assuming you also are thinking, we think that Miss Trunchable is going to be really strict and mean. It says that Miss Trunchbull tells, Miss Honey tells the students to never argue with Miss Trunchbull. And she even says that if you do argue with her, she can liquidize you like a carrot in a kitchen blender. So this tells me that Miss Trunchbull is very, very strict on punishment and she's going to be especially mean and nasty if you step out of line. Okay. So with that in mind, we're gonna continue to think about how adults and Matilda use their authority to demonstrate their power over children. As a reminder, authority means the power to give orders or make decisions. We've spoken about how Mr. and Mrs. Worm would use their authority over Matilda, and we also spoke about how Miss Phelps used her authority in a positive way. Today, we're gonna analyze Miss Trunchbull the same way that we have analyzed the other characters in the story. We're gonna focus on how both the author, Roald Dahl, and the illustrator, Quentin Blake, come together to help us paint a picture of Miss Trunchable in our brains. So we're gonna use both the picture and the text evidence to figure out and really analyze the type of character that Miss Trunchable is. So let's go to our focus question. How does the illustration on page 84 and the text support the characterization of, characterization of Miss Trunchable? So let's go ahead and find out. Um, if you are reading in your book, you're turning to page 84. I mean, sorry, you're turning to page 82. And we're going to follow along right here. Miss Trunchbull. In the interval, Miss Honey left the classroom and headed straight for the headmistress's study. She felt wildly excited. She had just met a small girl who possessed, or so it seemed to her, quite extraordinary qualities of brilliance. There had not been time yet to find out exactly how brilliant the child was, but Miss Honey had learned enough to realize that something had to be done about it as soon as possible. It would be ridiculous to leave a child like that stuck in the bottom form. Normally, Miss Honey was terrified of the headmistress and kept well away from her. But at this moment, she felt ready to take on anybody. She knocked on the door of the dreaded private study. Enter! Boom, the deep and dangerous voice of Miss Trunchbull. Miss Honey went in. Now, here, let me zoom in a little bit more. Now, most head teachers are chosen because they possess a number of fine qualities. They understand children and they have the children's best interests at heart. They are sympathetic, they are fair, and they are deeply interested in education. Miss Trunchbull possessed none of these qualities and how she ever got her present job was a mystery. All right, so we see that even though Miss Honey is scared to go see Miss Trunchbull, she goes anyway. Why? 
Give me a sum up when you know the answer. Why does Miss Honey go see Miss Trunchbull even though she's fearful of her? Yeah, we see that she goes to see Miss Trunchbull because she does not think it's fair for Matilda to be in the bottom class or like the kindergarten class. She knows Matilda is so smart and she wants Miss Trunchbull to take her out of that class and move her into a first or second or even maybe a higher grade. So this is why Miss Honey goes to see Miss Trunchbull even though she's a little bit scared. According to the narrator, how is Miss Trunchbull different than all other teachers? I'm going to zoom into the text evidence. Here it says, most teachers are chosen because they possess a number of fine qualities. They understand children and they have the children's best interests at heart. It also says they are sympathetic and they're fair and they're deeply interested in education. It says Miss Trunchbull possessed none of these qualities. So we see she's totally different than all other teachers. Okay, we're going to go ahead and continue reading. We are starting right here. She was above all. She was above all a most formidable female. She had once been a famous athlete, and even now the muscles were still clearly in evidence. You could see them in the bulk neck, in the big shoulders, in the thick arms, in the slimy wrists, and in the powerful legs. Looking at her, you got the feeling that this was someone who could bend iron bars and tear telephone directories in half. Her face, I'm afraid, was neither a thing of beauty nor a joy of forever. She had an obstinate chin, a cruel mouth, and small, arrogant eyes. And as for her clothes, they were, to say the least, extremely odd. She always had on a brown cotton smock, which was pinched in around the waist with a wide leather belt. The belt was fastened in front with an enormous silver buckle. The massive thighs, which emerged from out of the smock, were encased in a pair of extraordinary breeches, bottle green in color and made of coarse twill. These breeches reached to just below the knees, and from there on down, she sported green stockings with turn-up tops, which displayed her calf muscles to perfection. On her feet, she wore flat-heeled brown brogues with leather flaps. She looked, in sort, more like a rather eccentric and bloodthirsty follower of the staghounds than the headmistress of a nice school for children. All right. Why do we think the author spends so much time describing Miss Trunchbull's athletic past and her athletic body? Go ahead and pause the video and unpause me when you can explain why the narrator really focused on Miss Trunchbull's athletic body. Yeah, she describes her as someone really, really big. And because she used to be a famous athlete, we see her strong muscles. So now we know that Miss Trunchbull is someone we do not want to mess with, not that we did before, because now we know she's super strong. It says she has a bulk neck, big shoulders, thick arms, and powerful legs. So we see she's someone really, really strong, someone that we would be really scared of if we saw her just based on how she looked. Okay, the narrator also describes Miss Trunchbull's clothing as a bit odd. What makes her clothing odd? Yeah, it says that she's wearing a brown smock with a thick leather belt, and she's wearing green trousers and green stockings and brown shoes. So to me, it sounds like she's wearing army gear. So it seems like Miss Trunchbull is ready to go fight in a war or fight in a battle, and that she's not dressed for the part of a principal or headmistress of a school. How would you feel if you saw Miss Trunchbull based on what we just learned about her physical appearance? Yeah, you might feel scared of her. You might feel very terrified because of how big she is. We learned last chapter she's walking around pushing kids to the left and the right, pushing them out of her way. So she's someone that we're definitely uh, being fearful of. Okay, I'm going to have you do some independent reading, but I'm going to stay on the camera. So you're going to pause me. If you're reading in your book, you're stopping at the top of page 85 when it says on her desk. So you're going to pause and unpause when you get to page 85 on her desk. And if you're reading online, you're going to be stopping right here when it says under, oh, right here, stopping right here when it says desk. Go ahead, pause, and then unpause.
Okay, so now that you've finished um, that reading section, I want to connect to our focus question, which is asking us about this picture in your book on page 84. If we are online, we're on page 74. So what do we see in this picture? I want you to go ahead and you can jot down some notes. You can pause if you need to get your paper and pencil. You're just describing what you see in this picture. Some things that I wrote down, what I noticed in this picture is that she looks very fierce and jarring in this portrait. Her body language looks like she's very annoyed. She has one hand on her hip and the other hand is balled up on the table. The clothing is just like it was described in the book. It looks um, like she is ready to go off into war with a belt like that. And we see she has her high boots. She does not look like she's a principal in a school. On your own in the Google form, you're going to find text evidence that supports this picture. And then you are going to tell me how the picture and the text work together to help characterize Ms. Trunchbull. You are then going to finish the chapter and answer a few uh, multiple choice comprehension questions. Talk to you guys later.